Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, we are going to learn how to code a motor today. That's our ultimate goal. So if we look at our base plate over here, we have the VEX Cortex that we already attached. We have a little LED in there that we programmed. And today we're going to get to this piece up here, which is a motor. Uh, let me turn this around and you get a better chance to see it. Uh, so the motor is just connected uh, inside a U-bracket. And it's got a couple really long spacers that attach it to the base. And uh, let me show you how we're going to do that. Okay. The motor has uh, three openings on the end. So two of them are the screw hole openings. They're kind of they're gold colored. They match up with our gold colored motor screws. And then on the opposite end, this part over here is where we plug an axle in, and that part turns when we put uh, power to the motor. Okay. So to attach this, here's what you're going to need. You're going to need one of these small U-shaped brackets, and you're going to need two of these long spacers. All the other pieces you should find in your toolbox. And again, to attach a spacer, I put a screw inside that little U-shaped bracket, and then I just attach the spacer and screw it on there. Okay, so here's one. To do the other one, I put the screw through the U-shaped bracket, and then I hold that in place, and I screw the other spacer on. Okay? All right. The motor... I want to attach that with this end right here lined up with one of the end of the holes in our bracket. Okay, so I'm going to turn that around. I'm going to make the two gold screws of the motor line up with the holes in the U bracket, just like that. Okay, now whenever I put an axle through a piece of metal, I want to include one of these bearings. So I line that up as well. And then I'm going to get two small motor screws okay and the motor screws are these gold colored screws they're slightly thinner in diameter than the regular screws and they are especially made just to attach the motors so I'm gonna put that on there use one of the gold colored wrenches let's see if I can do this okay alright so here's one attach the other motor screw in the other hole over here and then I just have to put an axle in. Okay. All right. So the motor is firmly attached inside the U-shaped bracket. And then I just want to take an axle. And I'm going to slide that through the other opening in the bearing. And that is going to fit into the opening of the motor. Uh, sometimes we have a problems with these falling out. So what I can do is I can use a collar and try to line a collar up in here and then put the axle right through the collar. Easier said than done. <laughs> okay. So you get the idea. Your fingers are probably smaller than mine. You're going to be able to do that. Okay. Uh, when you're done, just attach that on the base. And then we're going to plug this in. Find the cord for the motor. It's going to be attached to this thing called a motor controller that helps us adjust the speed. If you look at the top of your cortex, find the side that says motor. And then let's take that cord and plug it into motor number two. In order to get this plug to fit well, the black wire needs to be on the side towards the numbers. So I put the black wire on the number side and then it should slide right in. Okay. Uh, if you want to get a little more effect, you can put a gear or a wheel on the end too, and then you can really see that as it turns. All right, let's move our focus over to Robot C and do a little bit more programming now. Uh, once you've opened Robot C 4.0 on your desktop, remember to just check the settings. Go to Robot, Platform, Type. You should have a dot in front of VEX 2.0 Cortex right up there. And slide down a little farther. Make sure you have a check mark by Natural Language PLTW. If you don't, remember to just click on those and you'll adjust your settings. Third thing I always look for, double check communication mode. Make sure it says USB only. And then the last step, go to View, all the way down here to Preferences. And make sure there's no check mark in front of the auto file saves. Okay. From here, we're ready to go. Click on New File. We want to tell the computer that, hey, we plugged in a motor. So I'm going to go to Motor and Sensor Setup. I'm going to find the tab here that says Motors. 
And I said I plugged it into port 2, right? So for port 2, I'm going to use this drop-down menu. I'm going to say either VEX 269 or 393 motor. We do not have the high-speed motors, so it just has to be one of these. Let's give it a name. Uh, I am going to call this right motor. So right motor. Oops. Motor. Okay. So I have that programmed. I can click apply and OK. And again, along the top line here, it tells me I have a motor. I plugged it into port 2. And I gave it a name, right motor. Okay. Perfect. Now on the left hand side we're going to go back to this command natural language. Whenever we use a motor we assume that that's going to include some kind of movement. So to get a motor to start I'm going to click the plus sign by movement. I'm going to click on start motor, drag that over to line 6. As a reminder my code has to be between these two curly brackets or it will not work. I notice that inside my parentheses there's two other commands, motor port and speed, and I need to change these. Motor port is, where did you plug it in? So I'm going to type in port 2. You can also type in right motor and it will recognize that because port 2 has the motor that we named right motor. And then speed. Speed I have an option. All my motors travel between 0 and 127. If I want them to go backwards, then I can type in a negative number. So if I want it to go half speed backwards, half of 127 is around 67. Backwards would be negative. My speed would be a negative 67. Okay? So I'm going to double click the word speed, and this is where I can tell how fast I want it to go. Let's open her up, full throttle, 127. Next, I have to tell it how long I want it to run, so I'm going to click the plus sign by wait. Find the command wait, wait time, drag that into line 7. Again, I double click on the word wait time. Anything in parentheses, I have to type. And I'm going to type in 3. Motor is going to run for 3 seconds. Then what is going to happen? I want it to stop. So I go back to natural language under movement. Now it says stop motor. I'm going to drag that over for my next line. Stop motor, in parentheses, which motor do you want to stop? Double click. Let's do the same we did above, call it port 2. Because we plugged it into port 2. And I think I have a program. Start motor, wait, stop motor. See if I made any errors. I'm going to click compile. Down here, no errors appeared. I think I am good to go. Let me get an orange cord. I'll plug that in and then we're going to test it. We're going to take a look at what happens. Alright? Give me just a second. Alright, we have an orange cord. First thing we do is plug that into the top of the cortex. I take the other end of this orange cord then and I plug it into a USB port in my computer. You will notice that some of the lights start uh, flashing in your cortex right away. It's perfectly normal. Uh, the top one robot will be red because the cortex is still off. So I turn the cortex on. Now that one is green. Okay. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to start and download my program. Let me split the screen here so we can see it all at once. The button download a robot. I'm going to take my program from my screen, go through the orange cord, and download it into the cortex. Now, let's try this. If I press start, I can see and hear my motor start. And every time I click start in that little pop-up window, same thing will happen. You notice the green bar in my program shows me the next line that's going to happen. All right, so give that a shot. I hope that works for you. Good luck.